It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer, and today we've got a massive can of beer from Fax. Uh, it's the Fax Brewery Denmark, Fax Premium Lager Beer. It's a one litre can, and it's a collector's edition 2018. Look at that. Some nice artwork. There's plenty of room for artwork on this can. Really cool. It's brewed by or owned by Royal Unibrew. I'm not sure how long that has been about, how long they've owned the Fax Brewery. Uh, we've got a big ring pull. The whole top of this can is going to come out now. I remember the reason why I'm so excited. Oh, no, it didn't. It didn't. I thought it was one of those big pop-off caps, the 360 caps. Massive glass then for this. Kind of works. It's the only glass I have that's big enough to take this whole beer. I remember these as a kid. I was always, even before the drinking age, the, the age where I was allowed to drink beer, I was always interested in beer, always collected the, the caps off the top of the the barrels. We used to play frisbees with the little plastic caps. Um, collect the different kind of breweries names um, and when I was in the shop my local little shop around the corner from where I lived in Caddickston this was a fad in the I think it was the late 80s early 90s maybe even mid 90s um, you'd always see these in the shops people really kind of enjoyed them over here in the UK but my question as I'm pouring out this massive beer My question is, Royal Unibrew and Fax Brewery, to the people of Denmark, to the people knowledgeable on this subject, were Fax Brewery, were they ever the kind of the number one brewer in Denmark or was Royal Unibrew the number brewer in Denmark? Where did Carlsberg fit into this whole situation? Were Carlsberg always the, the biggest brewer in Denmark? It seems to be a massive brewing tradition in Denmark. This brewery, the Fax Brewery in Denmark, started off in 1901. So always a big call for for lagers and beers in that in that country, which is terrific. I've never been to Denmark myself. I, I really want to go. Um, yeah. So my question. Where did Carlsberg, Fax and Royal Unibrew, where did they all sit back in the day? Were, were there ever a company that, that was in the lead, kind of the most sales, the most, the most beer produced in Denmark? Or was it always Carlsberg? It wouldn't surprise me if it was, but I'm interested to know, if you know. Right, here's the beer. Slow moving carbonation. It's really, I've been holding this now for, for about a minute. It's really heavy. Um, two finger white head, golden light, amber straw colored beer. Let's get the aroma. I'm gonna have to support this. My arm's aching. Sweet lager, 5% ABV. Hoppy, kind of lemon-like, almost a stinging nettle aroma in there. <clears throat> Smells good. There's a Viking on the front, you know. This is a Viking's beer, a big, a big can of Viking beer. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's all right. That's all right. It really is. Drinking this in the middle of summer, July, roasting hot out there. Chill this one right down. Really cold, crisp, drinkable lager. Nice and hoppy on the back end. A little bit sweet to begin with. 
carbonation pushes the beer around the inside of the mouth. I, you know, there's some there's some cases where I'm gonna have to swap hands. Whew, that's heavy. Um, there's some cases where, in terms of brewing a big beer, like a liter liter can of this beer, with it being so warm outside and with this glass being so thick, look at the gauge on that glass. I want a big beer. I really do. I want a big beer. I want to sit in the garden and I want to sit there for maybe 45 minutes enjoying a litre of beer and I don't really want to move. I want to sit in the sun and enjoy myself. So as long as you drink it quick enough, as long as the beer don't go warm on you. Yeah, there's a time and a place for a big beer like this. It's just one of those things, as I mentioned earlier on, in the, in my local shop, always seen these big cans of beer next to the Hofmeisters. Remember Hofmeister? Hofmeister was a big seller back in the day. Um, I, I'm not sure, because I did, I did drink from probably 14 years of age. Um, my parents used to go out on a Friday night. And I used to be in charge of my sister. My sister was 12, I was 14, when they first started leaving us to go out to their local pub. Um, and I used to, you know, if I had a couple of quid on me, I used to stand outside the shop and I used to say to somebody in the shop, would you, do you mind popping in? You know, you're going in the shop and you can you get me a, a couple of cans of beer? Because they wouldn't serve me in there. And I think the one time I asked somebody in the sh uh, going into the shop, I said, can you get me one of these big cans of Fax Premium? So I think I have... I do have a memory of drinking this rather large beer when I was an early teenager. I was in Lidl. I haven't seen it for years, facts. And I always used to say, remember them massive cans of beer years ago? And um, I was at my local Lidl and there it was on offer. I think it was £2.50 for a litre of beer. That's not bad. Not bad at all, it's about £1.20, £1.20 for a pint. Something like that. Crisp, drinkable, refreshing. It's not gonna blow the socks off um, people who are really interested in craft beer. I totally understand that. But on a nice, Let's finish off the, yeah, let's finish off my sentence. On a nice hot day in the middle of summer, it's a perfect place for it. Finishing flavors, I was getting a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepperiness on the back end. It's a simple premium lager. Right, um, beer allergy advice, don't need to know about that too much. Um, store in a cool, dry place. Uh, flavors, come on. Uh, aroma, uh, no, 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 not aromas. Uh, there's no, there's, in, there's ingredients for other countries. There's, there's a, a Spanish ingredient, French, uh, Netherlands, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Belgium, UK, ah, uh, um, that's, that's really weird. That's really weird. So they put, they they put all the ingredients for it must be it must be a requirement it must be a requirement to put all the ingredients for other countries on the side of the can but in the UK there's no requirement so they haven't used it let me see if I can translate some Spanish beer ingredient aqua water malto malt lupulo hops and consumari preferamante entro Detti Fondo. Don't know what that means. No idea. Royal Unibrew. I've tried some of their craft beer range as well in 2019. This beer review was recorded in the summer of 2019. And yeah, there's a, there's a, I, I used to be so against these premium laggers. I really did. I used to be kind of like, oh, dead against them. But 
I've learned to mellow out in my old age, if you like. I've learned to kind of appreciate that on a hot summer's day, there's a time and a place for a beer like this, and there really is. I'm looking forward now to sitting in the garden on this hot day with this cold beer. I'm gonna rate it. Fax Premium, £2.50, something like that for the beer. It's, it, it's okay. It's okay, it's about, about one pound ten, one pound twenty a pint using my own maths. Yeah, about that. <laughs> um, I like it enough to give it. It's a kid. It's, it, it's one of those beers that, that that really struck me as a teenager. Really kind of. Um, I have fond memories of this beer. Uh, I'm going to give it a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.